Great reporting. All right, joining us now is former acting director of National Intelligence, Ambassador Rick Grinnell. Rick, good to see you. Welcome in. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Uh, so NARA publishing redacted emails. It's pretty incredible. And one, they're saying we have a pseudonym of Vice President Biden is Robert L. Peters. They go on in the letter from Comer saying Robert Peters, Robin Ware, J.R.B. Ware are all emails, aliases. Uh, interesting that the vice president then would need alias accounts and perhaps why NARA would be interested in redacting them. What is your take on this breaking story? Well, look, it's the government covering up for the ruling party. This is what happens in uh, fascist dictatorships around the world. We've lost our moral authority in Washington, D.C. We can't shake our finger at countries who manipulate elections. We can't shake our finger at countries who have the ruling party trying to jail the opposition. This is things that... Um, only happen in other countries, but they've come to our country. I say this constantly, Bianca, but talk to any first or second generation American. Just talk to anyone who is new to this country or came to this country, and they will tell you that they left these third world countries because of tactics like this, where the media covers for the ruling class. People should really understand who Robert L. Peters is. It is a pseudonym, it is a fake name, it is a corruption scandal for the current president of the United States. And it needs Truly to be outright. covered. And it needs to be covered, uh, as you said. We can't have state-run media here uh, not giving uh, the full coverage to what is possibly uh, Comer's request. And we have August 31st is the deadline that NARA has to, has to respond to. Uh, Rick, while we have you, you know, uh, this may be also another trouble for Biden, uh, his classified documents case. And, you know, we know that some of them were found at the Penn Biden Center. But as we widen out, let's talk about that. You know, the ambassador to Germany, Amy Gutman, um, has made some comments about the Penn Biden Center. And we know that there was a lot of Chinese money giving uh, to the university, funneled in. This could be another possible uh, issue here that's not being that's not being talked about at all. What was this money for? Look, um, you and I both know a former U.S. ambassador to Germany who would not get this freedom from the press to uh, set up, let's, let's be honest here, what the current U.S. ambassador to Germany did. She was the president of Penn, a prestigious school. Mm -hmm. She set up the Penn Biden Center. They collected $100 million from China and Chinese businessmen. Then, in the year leading up to the 2020 election, while Joe Biden was just a citizen, the kitchen cabinet of the Biden campaign met at the Penn Biden Center regularly. The president of Penn, who set up that Penn Biden Center, who's now the U.S. ambassador to Germany, she paid Joe Biden $900,000 to be an advisor to the Penn Biden Center while they were collecting this money from China. And then immediately when Joe Biden is elected, he puts the president of Penn who did the Penn Biden Center. Blinken was also he there, the Rick, US as well. Ambassador to Germany. And Blinken was also there as well. A lot was going on at the Penn Biden Center that I think has not been sort of scrutinized as much possibly. Look, Look, if you look, at the, if you look at each and every step here, it's total corruption, it's money, follow the money, and you will see. But no one is asking these questions of the U.S. ambassador to Germany. She was passed by a voice vote, and nobody in Congress seems to care. This is how uh, corrupt Washington, D.C. is. I'd like to move to uh, Donald Trump this week. I, I know um, that there is this surrender date for the former president and the 18 others, and the sheriff has gone out and said, we're just going to treat them just like everybody else. We're going to book them. Then they're going to apparently bring them back for an arraignment. We had Sebastian Gorka on yesterday talking about the sheriff there and what may happen with the former president, Donald Trump, as he has to go to Fulton County Jail to surrender. Look, 91 charges against Donald Trump. Think about that, 91. This is unprecedented. People are seeing that this is just a pile on. This is what Joe Biden and his uh, people in Washington, D.C. are trying to do to stop Donald Trump 
from running. I just saw uh, yesterday a poll of independents showing Donald Trump crushing Joe Biden with independents. Now, what does that mean? It means that people who are not affiliated with Republicans or Democrats are looking at the situation and they see this as an overreach from the Democrats, an overreach from Washington, D.C., and they see that, well, Donald Trump has 91 charges against him. We see the evidence on the Biden family and nothing is happening. And people this are, is how countries people are, fall apart. People are uh, getting a lot of headlines, a lot of coverage. Let's play a little bit about uh, the, the take that Gorka has on this sheriff down in Fulton County. I think the sheriff is a political prostitute. Uh, what do you mean? We're going to do what we do always. How many times have you arrested a former president sheriff? This is a clown show. He's just acting like a Gestapo puppet. And you also have DA Fannie Willis, uh, who Mark Meadows is already making a move to move his uh, filing that, you know, filing saying we're going to move our trial. We should be in D.C. and then we're going to make a motion to dismiss, Rick. Well, what type of show are they running down here? Yeah, when you look at Fannie Willis and you just look at her trying to speak about these issues, uh, it's a clown show, I agree. It, it literally is like someone trying to speak French who doesn't know how to speak French. You're, you're listening and you're like, does she understand the law? This is going to be overturned. This is crazy local prosecutor trying to uh, become a statewide elected official. It's all politics. That's why there's 91 charges against the guy. Uh, people see it. Look, I, I think this is a clear overreach. If they would have tried one thing against President Trump, maybe people would look at it and try to believe it. But when you charge him 91 times, it says more about you than it does about President Trump. Got to leave it there. We're out of time. But Rick, come back and see us soon. Good to see you. All the best, Bianca. Thank you.